Hello everyone, this is Art from Arts Hobbies, also known as TechInnovations.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put one of my tech cases together, specifically the Series 1A and B cases. Now, I'm also going to assume that if you're watching this video, you're already familiar with what these cases have to offer in terms of customizations and options. If this is your first time you've heard about the cases, I ask that you also take some time to review the information on my site. So let's begin. We'll start with the board pieces, the nameplate and the PCB plate. Snap the nameplate to one side of the border. Then snap the PCB plate to the other. Now snap on the other border. At this point, you already have the skeletal structure of the case. Now, we move on to what I call the diamond joints. Taking a closer look at the diamond joints, you see there are two T-slots on the sides. These slots allow you to fit a hex nut and keep it in place while you drive in the screw. The slots are designed to fit 6 32 by 1 half inch screws. These are common screws, so if you accidentally lose any, they are easy to replace. In the center of the diamond joint is a hole that's threaded for an 832 screw. These are also common screws to replace. Coming back to the case, you want to attach a diamond joint to each corner of the borders using the 832 screws. In your package, you will find four 832 by 1 half inch screws and four 832 by 3 4 inch screws. The half inch screws are for the top of the case and the 3 4 inch screws are for the bottom. The bottom screws are longer to compensate for the extra space used for the rubber feet. Once all four corners of one border are done, flip it over and do the same for all corners of the other border. Now you don't have to tighten the screws all the way yet. Tighten just enough to hold them in place because you may be adjusting the parts later. With all diamond joints in place, your build should look like this. Now stand it on one side of the case and we'll begin attaching the front and side panels. In this example, I'll attach the front panel first, but it's up to you where you want to start. With the case standing up on one side, insert the hex nuts into the diamond joints. Then, place the panel on top and secure it with the 632 by 1 half inch screws. Again, no need to tighten the screws all the way as you need to make some adjustments later. When you're done with one panel, flip it over and attach another panel in the same manner. You pretty much attach all panels the same way, so go ahead and attach all the sides. With all the panels attached, look at the corners and see if there are any areas that need to be realigned. In this example, you can see one panel is higher than the other. Just loosen up the screws a little and align them. You can see the case is almost complete, and the hard part is out of the way. All you need to do now is attach the top and bottom panel, and that's your case. But before we complete the case, I want to talk more about the PCB plate and PCB holders. Let's take the PCB plate out first by removing one of the borders and then removing the PCB plate. Your case comes with two PCB holders and one wire loop piece. The PCB holders are easily attached to the PCB plate by placing the hex nuts into the slots, then choosing which holes on the PCB plate you want to attach it to. The wire loop piece is there to conveniently help organize your wiring. With all these pieces, you can choose to use any of them or none at all. These are just included to help you mount your PCBs but are not necessary to complete the case. You'll also notice one of the PCB holders have holes. The holes have been positioned to fit Toodle's Cthulhu PCBs. Only the four corners are used. The middle holes are there just in case you might have use for it for something else. You can see in this example, a Cthulhu PCB has been mounted using 440 screws and hex nuts with plastic spacers. 
Now, the spacers and screws for this are not included, but such pieces are easy to find in your local hardware stores. As for attaching other PCBs, you can simply zip tie them onto the PCB holder or whatever method works for you. Here is an example of zip tying some salvage T PCBs onto the holders. Once you're done attaching the PCB holders and PCBs, just pop the PCB plate back into the case. Now, let's talk about mounting your joystick. In this example, I'm going to demonstrate mounting a JLF joystick. This first example will show the mounting with a metal JLF mount. Every case will come with four sets of spacers and screws for the mount. From left to right, you get a 632 by half inch screw, quarter inch spacer, and a 332 inch spacer. With the screw, insert the 332 inch spacer first. Then, insert the screw into one of the mount's corner holes. Now, add the quarter inch spacer on top. Do the same for all four corners and mount it underneath the top panel. So what if you want to use a Plexi JLF mount instead of a metal one? Here we'll use a Pearl Plexi mount as an example. Now please note that JLF Plexi mounts are sold separately and do not come with the case. But should you be interested in one, each JLF Plexi mount comes with four sets of M3 screws and four 1 16th inch spacers. First, you'll need to remove the metal JLF plate. Now, if you don't have one in the first place, obviously you can skip this step. Then, install the JLF plexi mount using the M3 screws provided. Mounting the plexi mount to the top panel is exactly the same as mentioned before except for one detail. Remember the case comes with four sets of mounting screws. And within those sets, there is a 332 inch spacer. That's the spacer on the far right. Because of the thickness of the plexi mount, instead of using the 332 inch spacer, we will use the 1 16th inch spacer that came with the M3 screws. Then the mounting process is the same as with the metal mount. Now let's talk about version B of this case. For those who want a little extra layer of top support, this version will provide it. This piece goes under the top panel and will be used to mount your joystick rather than mounting it on the top panel as shown before. One other thing to note is a slight difference with joystick mounting. Because of the extra 1 8 inch thickness, different spacers and screws will be used. Version B of the case will come with two sets of 1 8 inch spacers. These work just like the quarter inch spacers in version A. Now the screws are 632 by 3 8 inch instead of the half inch screws. The 332 inch and 1 16th inch spacers will be applied the same way depending on if you're using the middle mounts or plexi mounts. Other than the support piece and top panel, everything else about the case is identical to version A, so the instructions for building the case remains the same, except instead of using a top border, it uses a support layer. And that's it! You've just built your tech case.
Now here are a few examples of other cases and ideas. This is my blaze blue case that some have seen in person. It has etching on the top panel, uses a mirror nameplate, mirror JLF mount, and also a mirror bottom facing upwards from the inside. This gives a very unique depth perspective within the case. This case also has weight slots installed and the side panels have artwork to hide the ball bearings for the added weight. I will talk about the weight slots and artwork covers in another video. Here is a transparent red with fluorescent orange around the sides. The great thing about fluorescent material is that the edges of the material really glow from a good light source. You can also see some side decors that are easily added to the case. More about those on my website. Here is a fluorescent green using the version B setup. You can see the Samitsu screw-on buttons fitting perfectly with the support layer. You can also see some colored Samitsu Plexi inserts that I will be talking about in another video. And that's it for this video. If you have any further questions, please visit my website at www.tech-innovations.com. And thanks very much for your time.